So all of you online, I know you're there because sometimes we, we just kind of leave you out. Will you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter, Luke chapter 18, verse 35? Luke chapter 18, verse 35. So it will be good for you to pay attention to the teaching by writing down. It will be good for you to pay attention to the teaching by writing down. So many things I'm grateful for. You know, was it on Friday? I posted a video on relationship. The video that I didn't even spend more than one minute to just hear what I would say and I said it. In 24 hours, the video now has almost 50,000 views. I said, ah. I, I asked, I said, when did I become the person that has 50,000 views? Because you keep growing, but you even never know you're growing. I've not been active in this Bagada Center. Pastor Dayo has led us with all the leaders and the team. The church is doing well. <laughs> Pastor, I said they want to put an extension tent in the car park now. I said, wow. I need to leave more centers so that they can grow. It seems as if I'm the problem. Luke chapter 18. Yet some people are in the church and are not growing. It's an abnormality. Why don't people grow like that when they come to a church? Number one, they don't believe with their heart all they hear. And they don't do with their heart all they hear. You know, some people practice this message from abroad. I said in testimony, they can't see us. What about you that are in a life center? So Luke chapter 18. So I want to talk about what to do when you, when you need to change desperately. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. Luke chapter 18. Verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as it was come near unto Jericho, a certain blind man, notice the way he was described. The Bible says, A certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Hearing the multitude pass by, he asked them, What a minute. So, something happened because all of a sudden the road in which he used to beg began to have more traffic than it used to have and for a beggar it can be good or bad good or bad because if there's a lot of people moving on the road then nobody gets to notice you as a beggar and or pay attention to you because there's now something that is what driving their attention the bible says this as they were there was a lot of traffic he asked them what does this mean oh my god let me start from there life is about perspective what happens to you it's about perspective why did the beggar ask what minute this i know you lost the job but what does that mean oh my god there are two things about life there's what happens there is the meaning of what happens so hannah did not have a child because she was meant to give birth to a prophet in the fullness of time what it is is that i don't have a child so to other people it seems as if my life is not going well but guess what to hannah my womb is being prepared to house a prophet to a lot of people when mary conceived jesus she was an irresponsible harlot she was stupid irresponsible sleeping around lady but the meaning of that was this so that's what happened the meaning was this blessed are thou amongst women blessed is the fruit of your womb i lost my job the meaning is this you need to you're going to get a better job but when people lose their job they focus on the loss they don't see the meaning you know what i'm saying so this beggar could have been abusing jesus as an irresponsible idiot why did he choose to pass this way he has disturbed my business today he, he could have been he has disturbed my business today this guy is just useless he will be so angry he didn't say that he interpreted it another way he said my god the miracle worker is here for him to pass this way it's because it's the time for my miracle the question is this and when people are desperate for change 
the first thing you have to understand that what perspective am i having everybody saw goliath and saw what an obstacle or limitation david saw goliath and the first thing david said was this what will be done for the person that pulls down this man because he saw an opportunity you stay in this country do you see the limitation or you see the opportunities and just by side notes the biggest opportunities are in the are in developing countries just side notes because developed countries the opportunity have been maxed out and the commission is steep but in developing countries there are lots of opportunities so your cell is not growing what do you see do you say all my sub members are irresponsible or do you see the thing that maybe maybe the reason why it's not growing is because i need to grow so that it can grow how come listen to me the biggest pain of childbirth is when a woman is going to have a child yes or no how come the woman at that point is in pain but she's also saying i want i enjoy the pain the reason why she has perspective once you don't understand your pain it will be very painful once you understand your pain it will give you perspective so they say, ah, he said, honey, just hold me here. She can endure the pain. She can push the pain because she understands that the purpose of the pain is for the greater good. So you see a girl that doesn't have a job and say that, I don't know why my life is like this. God is, not, God is upset with me. Maybe the reason why you don't have a job is because you are meant to start employing other people. So I don't even know why I was born in this country. Maybe the reason why you were born in this country is because there are some problems you have to fix in this country. So I said, I don't know why I'm so broke. Maybe the reason why you're so broke is this. If you have so much money, you will not think very well. Out of your limited resources, you can become more creative. So, Jesus was passing by and he said, what minute this? What does this mean? Write in your notes. What does this may not to write it somewhere that challenge you are facing i know you see it in a certain way but what does this mean that marital problem what does this mean that financial problem what does this mean that career problem what does this mean until you know the other meaning apart from the one you know you will keep addressing it the wrong way there's lockdown. What does this mean? <laughs> I'm just reading the text. What did he? So, so he asked a question. He said, What it means? It? Because, and listen to me. Uh, will, will you receive this morning? No, that's so weak. Will you receive this morning? A lot of people, different things are happening in their lives. And they are caught in it but they don't understand the meaning of it and that's why it's a circle of wasted effort because they don't understand what it is you live in canada you work in europe you live in north america have you asked yourself because if you don't know what it means oh my god what did you receive this morning everybody was on that road people that had eyes on the road everybody on that road was following jesus nobody had the miracle because all of them were doing what other people were doing nobody knew what it meant the only person that had the miracle was the person that was blind my god even people that had eyes could not see the one that was blind they had oh my god do you know what it was so limited it took people that had eyes to tell him what was happening but he could interpret what was happening people have jobs but they are blind people have businesses they are blind people live in the midst of huge opportunities they are blind he said what does this mean everybody was flowing and following jesus and that's a challenge when you come to church like other people when you pray like other people when you live like other people and the reason why is that you're just afraid to be different and you're just doing what other people are doing and god is saying that i know you're doing what other people are doing but stop for a moment and say what does this mean everybody works in the bank and you work in a bank what does this mean you do social media everybody what does this
this mean? You are a grandparent. What does this mean? You are a single lady. What does this mean? Unfortunately, we're so caught up with the negative, the pain and the loss. He could have been so absorbed in the fact that this new disruption does stop this business that he could not see what it meant. Most of the time, your biggest challenges are your opportunities. The biggest crises have the biggest opportunities. That's why in the last crisis, we had people hitting record levels of wealth that the human history has never seen before because the crisis presented opportunities. Before the pandemic, every week we will have in our church maybe about three or four thousand people watch online or participate in the service online. Our YouTube page, we just go three thousand. We, we, I think we started this the, before the pandemic with about one thousand six hundred people. I look at the YouTube right now, we're heading towards twenty five thousand and we'll get to hundred thousand soon. Because every week, you know what? We have a, about we have over a hundred thousand people that shrunk that place. That's over a hundred thousand. Yeah, over hundred thousand that shrunk that place. But the reason why was this: we I chose not to complain about the lockdown. I'm asking myself, what does this mean? Do I see the disruptions, or I see the Jesus passing in the disruption? When people want desperate changes, the first thing you need to know is this. You are going to have to change your perspective. And that's why some people think God is not answering their prayer. You know why? Because God has answered their prayer, but their prayer has been answered in a way that they do not understand. Hey, yeah. Most people think, and you need to give me this, you need to cut out this message and maybe put it online, maybe sometime today. Most people think that their prayer is being delayed or God has not answered their prayer. In reality, God has answered their prayer, but the reason they don't know God has answered their prayer is this. Their prayer has been answered in a method approach that they are not familiar with. So although they have the answer, they are still looking for answers. How do I mean? The wise men had the star leading them to Jesus Christ. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the star was still there, but the wise men went to the house of Herod. You know why? Because in their natural mind, their answer was in Herod's house. And as soon as they went to Herod's house, the, the star disappeared. Many of you, your star have disappeared because you've gone to the wrong place. And God wants you to come back. And that's why last week in the next level prayer, if you didn't do the prayer, go back to Monday, Tuesday, next level prayer. We began to pray the prayer of inquiry. One of the things we prayed was this. Lord, anywhere I've stepped out of line, Lord, realign me. Because when you step out of line, the star disappears. Did you notice as long as they were in Herod's house, they did not see the star? But as soon as they left Herod's house and began to trust God, the Bible says the star which they saw reappeared and began to lead them again maybe the reason why your star has disappeared is that you stepped out of line you're trying to do what other people are doing you're called to ministry but you don't want to do ministry you're called to business but you want to stay in the bank you're called to sow this huge seed but you don't want to do that and god says step into my wheel so i say where did the star go to this is the problem you know Theology says that when you disobey God, God cuts you off. That's not what happens. The star stays there. It doesn't move because God was living by the star. But when they changed the road, they changed from where they could see the star to where they could not see the star. Until they came back to where they could see the star, they could not go ahead. Are you here, somebody? Hey. Let's read this text. Pastor is in trouble this morning. Because he's thinking for me and saying, Pastor has never gotten to point one. The Bible says, and they told him, what meaning of this? And they told him and they told him that Jesus, see, they were the ones that told him, but they did not receive a miracle. He says, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth, and that's why you can be a pastor in the church and people can go through your ministry and be blessed, and you will not be blessed. For example, you know, we'll say something like, Hey, if you want to join a cell, someone says, why, why, why don't you join a cell? Listen to me. The first thing is this, just to let you know. The way the church is structured is not human wisdom. God designed the church. No human being thought of, let there be a church. And that's why no human being can destroy it. No matter what any government do, does, rather. Just because I said, I will build my church. 
and the gate two things that god built himself marriage and the church it says and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it and one of the things in the church is this god says the way i want my church to be is that people must connect together that they must not just be in the church they must be a family and that's why we have the wisdom of the cell system and so i said well why don't you want to belong to a cell because in your wisdom you're trying to say but what will i gain there listen to me you know what faith is faith is say lord i don't know what i will gain there but i will take the first step and i've seen people that went to cell and found their wife in cell see if god shows you everything you will not obey because you love him you will obey because it's profitable what did God tell Abraham? He says, go, I will show you. He said, go, I will show you a land. Why didn't he tell Abraham the land? He says, how much can you follow? He told Abraham, he said, I will show you. He didn't say, Abraham, you are going to this land. He said, he said Abraham, come out to your father's house. He said, go to the land in which I will show you. So, Abraham, some of you feel as if you want to say, Abraham is the father of faith, what it means. What it means is that Abraham called his wife and his servants and said, we're going. Where are we going to? I don't know. As we go, we'll know. Who does that? But you know why God does that? God just wants to see how much can you trust me? Because trust is important to God. But, you know, and that's why the biggest thing with God is relationship. You know why? Once people don't have relationship, they want to turn God to a lottery visa. I pray you answer. I pray you answer. And that's my problem when people say, so seed, you'll get something in 24 hours. All those concepts, I think they're crazy. You know what God wants to do? Your tight. Either you see result or not, you tight. And he knows those guys tight because of me not because of getting something once you pass that test it now opens up the whole heaven and begins to bless you many men here when you have a girlfriend or you just married your wife one of the things you say you test her with your money first is that not true guys amen that's what they do they may not say consciously didn't you do that sir you you did right everybody does that so you you will see i want to say test her you see how you tell her that oh i have this money and you want to see how she'll respond if there's going to be oh you have 10 million now. yes i've been telling you i need a brand new car you know that kind of thing so but guess what when she passes that test all of a sudden you're not careful with what your income is again because you can trust her the reason why many christians are stuck financially is this they've not passed the money test praise god praise god are you here today the bible says any and <laughs> the bible says when they knew us jesus of nazareth verse 8, it says and they cried saying jesus the son of david have mercy on me and the bible says he cried listen to me you can know what something means but what do you do about what you know this is a problem with pentecostal charismatic we speak in tongues too much you need to step into the marketplace and do something there are many guys here you really want to ask a girl out brother you know it's the will of god stop parabolating after the service say sister can i see saw you the worst she can say is no and no does not show on face there are many of you here you're meant to start a new business or you're meant to market a certain person or you're meant to go for more fun you've come to wine press Abel, ukarama, kulama. i receive i receive now you are received do something the bible says the moment he knew what it was he cried the only thing he could do as a beggar he can see the road he can see the savior was to he didn't say he said he cried ah! it was a cry And see what the Bible says. He cried once. Yes or no? The Bible says he cried once, right? <laughs> the Bible says he cried, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked them. That means as he was crying, it began to face obstacles. You know, some of you, once you face, and this is the first thing, eh? This is the first thing you must know. Challenges are part of the human race. People always say, why me why me listen to me why not you you are human the only people that don't have problems are dead in the grave challenges are part of the human race you say but all my friends are okay that's what it seems they make this is what i notice people that are okay in their career they could have a marital problem 
People that are okay in their marriage and career could have what? Could have a health problem. People that are okay in their marriage health could have a child problem. People that are okay in their child could have an in-law problem. Everybody just seems to have one problem or the other. You know why? Something that keeps you alive and your heart pumping is called challenges. When there are no challenges, life becomes boring. I'm saying so because you need to embrace challenges. So I says, I'm 35 and I'm not married. That's why I'm human. It's a challenge and I'm going to overcome it. Don't let your challenge always make you break down. This, this guy was blind. I thought if a, guy, a blind guy is asking for help, everybody will help him. This did not happen in this case. What happened was this. Everybody was shutting him down. So in your bid to step out in faith, there will be people shutting you down. The Bible says this. The Bible says they rebuked them. They said, idiot, shut up. You're in an entity. You should not be here. You belong to the, to the tribe of peasants. He says, if you hold this peace, the moment they say hold this peace, the Bible says, and he held this peace. Yes or no? The Bible says what? And he cried out so much. My God, we don't give up or cave in. If we're looking for capital, we don't find it, we go again. If we're looking for contract, we don't find it, we go again. If we're looking for wife, we don't find it, we go again. If we're trying to get pregnant, we don't find it, we go again. We don't become despair. One of the things I want to notice was this, that this guy was blind. Some of you, you know what is wrecking your faith? Something happened to my mother. Something happened to my friend. Something happened to He had a condition that is a proof that God was not like you in a religious sense. Because many of you are not able to push because you really believe that God doesn't send you. And the reason why you said so is because something happened to you. Something happened to your mom. Something happened to your sister. Something happened to your business. Something happened to a pastor. If, if this man was thinking this way, he would never in the first place ask God for a miracle. He would have said, what's the point of asking him to open my eyes? If I was made blind without my effort, most likely it's the will of God. And it's difficult. Ever look up here. It's difficult to have a miracle. From a God that you think hates you. And that's why I say all the time. My God is what? Say it, say it. Those that join the prayer, say it, say it. My God is what? My God is what? My God is what? I want to, those that answer the prayer will know the answer. If you don't answer, do the prayer, you will not know the answer. There's no thing of guessing. My God is what? My God is good and kind to me. That's the memory. Something that God is consuming fire. It will roast you. My memory of God is this. My God is good and kind to me. He's always trying to help me. He's always caring for me. He's always covering up my mistake. He's always showing me kindness. My God is good and kind to me. People that think that my God is fire, watch their life. Their life is full of battles. Have you noticed that? Because the revelation of God you have is the manifestation of God you see. Have you seen single girls that think that nobody's going to marry them? Check. Because their God is a God of war. So their marriage, getting married is war. But this is what I believe. My God is good and kind to me. It's, you, know, you know when someone is kind? You don't have to do anything for them to just dash you. That's how God dashes me. Before I pray, he will dash me. I ask, he will do good. Because my God is good and kind to me. How did they get the names of God in the Old Testament? The names of God were gotten from what? What God did. The way they knew God was what he did and what he was doing. So when God provided, they called him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. Although that's a limited translation of Jehovah Jireh. It's more than that. When God was very strong in battle, they called him Jehovah El Saboaz, the God of, the God, um, what do you call it? The, the Lord of hosts. When God covered right sin, they call him Jehovah Rohi, the God of our righteousness. And I just say, he's my father. He's good and kind to me. And because of that's what I see, that's what I see manifest. That's why when it's next level time, you know, all of them that attend next level, the way I feel bad for you, no, I'm not even asking to attend. Please don't attend. We have enough. Like we have 30,000 now. You just wait until you see that's your... Did you hear that testimony where a Muslim got pregnant? 
this the, there are three friends one christian one muslim other christian so this christian said post the next level the other christian of course they are, i'm used to prayers you know how we christians are nonchalant i'm you know, da, 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 da. you know then the muslim says this girl said this thing works let me try it then she got pregnant then the muslim now told the other christian girl this thing works and she said i'm so stupid I, so this thing works then she started joining then she now said the testimony say i'm sending this one of my friend that invited me the muslim girl let's pray i'm out of time